party atmosphere. I don't know if you saw it before, but Kaiser Chiefs were here getting the party started. The atmosphere really is buzzing. And don't forget the wheelchair and women's tournaments will be kicking off in the next couple of weeks, all culminating in a finals weekend in Manchester. For now though, let me pass you over to our commentary team of Dave Woods, Jonathan Davis and Brian Noble. Enjoy the game. The noise would have hit them and then that roar of expectation and excitement gives way to a fantastic sight here at St. James's Park. Flags flying of these two nations all around the stadium. 50,000 or so rugby league roaring fans in here. Who needs an opening ceremony when you've got a game like this to look forward to? And we're going to hear the two anthems first of all the Samoan anthem sung by Isabella Moore Superb. Absolutely superb. And next, God Save the King, sung by the lady who is the voice of English Rugby League, Lizzie Jones. Feels like such a long wait for us to get to this moment. Seven years ago, they started planning the World Cup. We had the COVID issues, of course, that meant an extra year's delay. But now, in this fabulous stadium, in front of this fabulous crowd, we are just seconds away. And we're going to see now the Manu Sivatao, the Samoan cultural dance ahead of kickoff. World Cups are full of magical moments like this. Fuck you! 
going to be a terrific drama over this next five weeks. Sensational. The Civitao includes the words, my strength is at its peak. You would not deny them that, would you? And England will be hoping that they can match that in the next 80 minutes or so. These are the lineups. Uh, the Samoan side featuring several who played in the NRL Grand Final just a few weeks ago, including Tego, Crichton, Toho and Luai, who all played with Penrith that day. Junior Paolo in the pack, who uh, was on the losing side for Parramatta. But that tells you the level they are at at the moment in terms of performance. And England's, well, something old, something new in the blue of England. Callum Watkins in the centre, Chris Hill at prop. Veterans of the last two World Cups. There'll be an excitement to see the new centre wing combination of Herbie Farnworth and Dom Young in there as well. <laughs> Referee is a man who's very used to uh, refereeing in this country, Ashley Klein, he's currently in the NRL. We've got a couple of video references, Adam G and Robert Hicks is there for the captain's challenge. We'll explain more of that as it goes on. Got important roles by some very experienced officials for this opening game. So who are we looking forward to watching today? Brian Noble, first of all. Who's who's the firecracker in the England lineup? Well, for our viewers, I think England, who won't be well known over here, is the boy from Skipton who applied his trade in the NRL from a junior, was brought up in that system, but he's clearly a Northern Englishman. He's been killing it for the Brisbane Broncos. His excitement, his body movements in the centres, have been really valuable to this England team. And Jiffy, what about the Samoan team? Uh, there's a lot of players to pick from, obviously, the Penrith Panthers back line, but this kid is special. So he, he is just off the clock, you know, he plays a lot on the wing, so. As James Graham said in studio, put him under pressure. You know, kick chase is supposed to be good, because I think that's that's going to be crucial today. If England can keep Samoa out of their 20 metre area and have a good kicking game, you know, this is going to be an absolute belter of an opening match. The moment of togetherness, 13 seconds when players of all nations through the tournament will support equality and um, Put a case for anti-discrimination. One game together. Tommy Makinson pawing the ground, ready to get us underway. Now the noise lifts. Sean Wayne, the England coach, looking on.
It's going to be sensational. Five weeks of rock and roll rugby league across so many venues. The world's greatest rugby league athletes. And it all starts right here, right now. It's Samoa who get first touch of the ball at the World Cup 2021. Brian Noble, Jonathan Davis alongside. Well, it, I just like this. This is the main event. We had a slight distraction before, and this is world-class main event. We've got two teams who are really going to get stuck into each other. I think the difference is I think England has to be uber disciplined, work over Samoa's middle, which is considerable to say the least. What we're going to see is such physical animals from the Samoan team. Their players are athletically gifted, are highly skilled, and nine of them played in the grand final not two weeks ago. Yeah, two good, two good sides here, and I think, you know, it's not knockout stage yet, but it's important to get a good win under your belt because I think as win as you go, easier side of the draw. But I just expect a good kick here, but discipline will be key because that gives field position. Well, there's a first carry from Tommy Makinson. We're going to see plenty of that through this tournament. Just no consideration for personal health and safety when Tommy Makinson runs the ball in, hitting those big fellas hard, and Herbie Farnworth now. First test match for Herbie Farnworth in the centres. Dom Young will be playing on his outside as well. And now Chris Hill, the veteran, hits some big bumper bars coming his way. But England looking to ramp it up in these early stages. Well, it's a good opening set so far by England, Dave. Tomkins looking for the kick to the corner. Was he taken late? The referee no. says no. It's uh, picked up by Soalihi. And Samoa get the chance to carry again here. Yeah, I think it will be very, very happy with that first set. Look where they turn the ball over. Tompkins, you know, the good kick, but they put a lot of pressure on him. Play there, have a you drop. Out of dummy half, it's going to be taken by Luhai towards that right hand side. And England looking to dominate at this end of the ground if they can. It's a fairly mooted atmosphere at the moment. I think England were hoping the fans would really get behind them. Let's, um, let's see that atmosphere lift in these next few minutes. Well, I think the feeling out the atmosphere, like everybody else is, element of nervousness around everywhere, and nice smart kick that from Low Eye, wasn't it? Yeah, the just, sideline. Where do you want it? I thought he went for the 40-20 there, just short on it. Yeah, I think it's slightly, you know, subdued at the moment. Both sides will be patient at the start, trying to feel each other out. You know, looking for the first header to get that first attacking opportunity. You know, you've just got to be patient, wait, wait, not chase things, and get and, and just finish your sets. Use the foot. Well, England right get possession here, back here. Sean Way looking on. Let's go. England coach. Okay, no tackles. Four games in four years for him. It's been a long, long time, hasn't it? Appointed before the COVID Brayden epidemic, here, pandemic. Like Missed out a lot of international rugby league. The Kangaroos should have been over here a couple of years ago. The World Cup itself should have been staged last year, but everything put on hold because of what the world's been through. McAloram out of dummy half for England. Taken on now by Victor Radley. Just short of that halfway line. McAloram again. Now Tompkins with a skip towards that right-hand side. Quick hands all the way out to Young. Young's going to try and take on. Tabuai Fido on that outside. It's another set of six here for England. They start the tackle camp right from the beginning. So Chris Hill can charge it in. And England have a great platform here. It's the first opting over England. Another set, full set here. Out it goes to Wellesby. Now it's with Williams. Pop back on the inside and almost, almost ripped through. Quickly play. Tompkins goes left. Dummy shown by Williams. That's how close they are to the line here. Right at the start of the game, the pass is poor, but Tompkins picks up, resets the attacking line. It's taking a sting out of the Move momentum, out of the movement. Right here, well, they've still got tackles in the yep. back here. Comes out to Williams. Williams with a short pass. Hill trying to force his way through again. Last tackle. Last tackle. Last tackle in the set. Five out. McAloran spins it back. Here comes Williams. Jabs it into the area. Oh, is that touchdown? As far as we've got there to score. Okay, Jay, just check the contact as well, mate. Huge moment in the opening five minutes. there's no interference on the kick chase, then the knock on goals. Well, a couple of things to look for here, isn't there? Whether it's a try or whether it's a penalty for England as well. Well, I personally think it's no try. I don't think he quite got there, but he was impeded, so... I think it's a body language. Well, the video referee... Video ref to director. He's Adam G. Could you please... 
Could you please pause it on the boot here? Yeah, left side kick chase for offside. I'll monitor the player near the goalpost. Yep. Yep. Okay. Can I get a can I can I uh, get that replay, please? I need to see the contact on the chaser coming through before we go to grounding. Your best angle on the contact on the chaser coming through. Yep. Okay, so play this through, please. All right, can you go to a close up on this grounding and go slow, please? Okay, so we have no grounding there from Herbie Farnworth, but we have Anthony Milford changing direction and closing the gap on Elliot Whitehead. So we, uh, I've, had, I've seen all the available angles to make my decision. Thank you, Director. Well, it's going to be no try, but it is going to be a penalty for England by the sounds of it, right in front of the sticks. Well, I think he was impeded. Yeah. And that's why they've got the penalty. It clearly didn't ground the ball. It's a fabulous kick from Williams, and it's great on the end of some pressure, so it's the next best thing to a try. I think it's a, I, that's a good call. It's definitely obstruction. But uh, for me, you know, England would be very pleased with that set. You know, I knew they had a repeat set, but the important thing was to finish a set, you know, Probably, and that's what they did. You know, they, they nearly scored the try from him. I would take the two points now, but England should be happy with the way they finish the set. Well, they're going for two. They're going for two. I think that's a, a no brainer at this stage of a game and a well, opening match of a World Cup, isn't it? Absolutely, but the early exchanges, you'd say England had yeah. the ascendancy there. Yeah. They looked threatening, they were injecting themselves through the Samoan line, and I think they'll be really pleased with how they've started the game. Jiffy mentioned, Jonathan mentioned discipline at that side of the game. That's about the concentration, that's about being in the right place at the right time. And the England shape that they're showing to the zones, for me, augurs well. Well, Tommy Makinson with the uh, conversion attempt here. The man for the big occasion is uh, is Tommy. Eighth England appearance this afternoon. He's already scored four tries. He was a golden boot winner a few years ago, wasn't he? But played in so many grand finals for St. Helens down the years. And up he steps and right-footed puts that ball between the sticks. And England get the opening points of this World Cup. Tommy Makinson's penalty and England lead by two points to nil. Yeah, good sovereign. I, I just think Makinson, when he won uh, you know, the International Player of the Year, it really made him. I think it gave him the confidence to go looking for the ball. He's tremendous cutting the ball out of his own half. And he's an amazing finisher. So that accolade, maybe people didn't think he was just at the time, but I think he's grown out. He's a great international player now. And his game is based around, and take this the right way, for, for our viewers, recklessness. Yeah. He fires himself into the line at a speed that generally gets him a result at the end of that. So he's a massive asset for this England team. Pace of the game really slowed down, isn't it, now with that video referee decision, that penalty, and now we're waiting for a ball to restart, and they're not happy with that one. They're not happy with that one. They want another ball. <laughs> So they're searching around on the sidelines. Give us one that we can score with. Must be one ball. Is this Wimbledon all of a sudden? New balls, please. Well, let's see how this one goes down. Whoop. Wait. The ball boy took a tumble. <laughs> Fantastic, he's OK. So Sue Lee had a big round of applause for the ball boy there as well. He'll remember that for some time, won't he? Sure, his mates will have that on social media right now. Here we go, game underway again. Sohalihi with the restart. England back in possession and have made a really confident start to this game. I think England have been superb in the start. They look focused, disciplined, the discipline to be concentrated, to be at the right place. The big fellas are carting the ball forward and clearly meeting some obstruction here from the team in blue, but I have to say they've started really well. Callum Watkins almost slipping through. His last act in an England shirt was in that final four years ago <laughs> when he almost scored the try. Here's Radley. Well, for our viewers at home, the England players are finding their fronts and getting quick play of the ball. So in and around where we're talking about now, and Chris Hill is carrying the ball, those big fellas have managed to find quick play of the balls, which is making their getting out of their own half a whole lot easier. This is the next challenge, this Here kicking we go. bit. Here we go. This is the uh, the crackerjack, isn't it? Joe Yeah, they've got to find... 
find ground on the kick. They go and give him the ball directly into his chest. So set restart, I think. The hooter sounded, which suggested it was. I'm not sure if we saw the referee wave his arms, but Samoa get the, uh, the chance to build again from inside their own half here. Hamlin Ueli with a carry. Danny Levi, Papa Lihi, and stopped by that brick wall of English defenders. Well, that's some of the challenge for this England team. When Samoa have got the ball, they've got to weigh him up. They've got to get forward. And Sean Wayne, interestingly, their coach said at the start, listen, we've got a bit of biff in us as well. I tell you what, Radley started well. He's carried the ball well. He's, he's been involved in a couple of big hits, you know, hitting people and him being hit himself. Across the line, it comes again as uh, Samoa search at something here. And they've got a bit of pace on this left-hand side, but Hamlin Ueli will be... Tackle ball in hand, and here comes the last play. They're numbering up. It's Luai who steps back on the inside. Watch his footwork. Can be magical at times. Now it's Milford. Milford with a kick through, but that should be and is an easy take. And England back in possession again here with Farnworth on that left-hand side, making yards himself. Yeah, but Samoa missed a glaring opportunity. That they'd created the numbers on the left-hand side, and it didn't just put it through hands. That's all they needed. That's, that's part of Samoa's challenge, isn't it? They haven't had a blueprint. England have had a game and managed to iron some things out. The courts themselves, Matt Parrish was saying, were a bit undercooked. Certainly didn't look undercooked there. McElroy waits a dummy half again. Looking to get things going. Radley across the hill. Hill pushing forward. Several players in this um, England side, in, in both sides to be fair, who might not have been representing their country in, at a World Cup if it had been played last year, but... That's the way that fates take you as England, with Whitehead, finds himself just about ten inside the opponent's half, and last play coming up here. Little chip over the top by Williams, a chip and a chip. There's a knock-on by Suwali. There was an infringement in the build-up. There was an offside with the ball picked up. There's so many things there for the referee to untangle. Well, it's all in England's favour. What if he untangles? Because Suwali, Su Su he knocks the ball on there, and it's whether or not he adjudicates the Samoan player coming back. I don't think he had much choice in getting out of the way. Doug, just given it as a knock-on. Well, knock that that knock his confidence a little bit. So Ali, he, you know, you had plenty of time. He just rushed to try and pick the ball up off his toes. It was very different playing on the wing, playing full back. You're isolated. Just watch, you know, it's, they go down the short side again. George Williams puts it on the foot. You know, he tries to pick it, a miracle pick up on the go. You know, he's just got to try and trap it, make sure that he collects it. No opportunity for England. What a position for England again here. Set of six, Samar have got it all on to defend. Samar's have been under the pump in the early stages. Here's Burgess with a big surge and the urge. Talking about big human beings, there's one. Tom Burgess takes them close. McAloran stands at dummy half. Switches back to Wellsby. Now it's Williams. Hunted down but gets it away. Tompkins with a step. Had he gone left, might there have been a try in the offing, but he took the decision to try and uprip them themselves. Now it comes back towards the middle. Williams. Victor Radley. Big boom from Radley. Five out. McAloran. Williams. Burgess with a push and a push and it takes three big ones to keep him at bay last play McAloran spins it back step inside from Wellsby Wellsby with a kick bounces around and it's play on and Samoa get possession back again I'll tell you something for our viewers at home the England number 13 Victor Radley is having a huge impact on this game He's going into the Samoan line and attracting Samoan defenders. So if our viewers just recognise the 13, when he goes in line, something happens, he stops the defender. Australian-born Victor Radley, but uh, oh, there's Matt Parrish, by the way, the Samoan coach. Third World Cup in charge for him. Plenty of support there, Richard Agar, Jeff Toovey, Andrew Webster, Frank Pritchard, I think they're all on that coaching roster as well. So lots of experience and know-how in the Samoan back room. Kicks away off the boot of Luai. Makinson with the catch. And here comes the carry from Tommy Makinson. He's one down already, one of the Samoans, he's yes, struggling. Samoan player in strife down there, isn't it? I think it might be Papa Lee here. I'm not sure, but England carry on with Young. Young held up, plays it quickly. Good play the ball. Tompkins, left to Watkins. Watkins now. 
coming on at pace. England with another wave of attack, already leading by two points to nil, but looking for more. Radley now, arcing into a perceived gap. Takes some effort for the Samoans to pull him down. 20 away. McAloram looks to that left-hand side. Williams steps back down the middle again. Williams with the offload. Hill with a carry. Hill drive down within touching distance of glory. Tompkins, he'll go out for Dummy Hall. He's over the line. Has he touched it down? No, he's not. No, he's not. Held up. They go back 10 and play the ball again. Yeah, it's no play the ball there, so he just has a go. No, I think he's held up there. Referee's in a great spot. There's a Samoan player injured as well under the sticks, which is why it's being held up here. England will be desperate to keep the pace alive. They want to carry on. Well, they've had one blow already because there's one Samoan player. I couldn't recognise him going off, but it's very innocuous. Well, this first 12 minutes has gone really well for England. This is the Tompkins effort. Did he get it down? I don't think he did. Great effort there, got under him. Great defense, Both players. Great committed defence, that was. Well, superb defence underneath your sticks. It's all England. I just think they're moving forward really well. I thought at the start of the game it was a game of chess with some weapons, some baseball bats with each other, but England are showing their incision and their precision and the discipline to get themselves in, in not only into this game, but playing at the right end of the field. They're really carrying the ball in the backfield well. Well, here come England again. They've still got tackles in the back here. McAloram will have a go. The short pass. Burgess! Oh! It's bounced away, I think. The referee will have a second look here. Why not when you've got the technology? No try, he thinks, on the field. And there's not too much celebration in the England ranks, is there, either? Has Burgess got this down? To director, can I please get a close-up and nice and slow for grounding? What do we reckon? What do we reckon? Oh, is there just get, enough uh, of a video, uh, Director, can I just get another angle so. to make sure I think Joseph he'll adjudicate Suarez's the video referee will adjudicate that he... I don't that think he got down with okay. pressure. I think he's I've lost that. I've seen all available angles to make my decision. Thank you, Director. Here we go. With the decision. No try. No try. I, I tell you what's good for England. They're playing at the middle. One of the strategies we thought they would play at is in and around the middle, tiring out this Samoan, their big fellas in the middle, and it's working. Yep, I think Burgess, you know, has had a big start of the game. You know, he's carried the ball where he's got over, you know, the, the gain line. He's just post-tackle. He's carrying ball extremely well. Oh, oh. Well, welcome to the game. He is. Kelma Tuilangi. He's just come on for Hamlin Ueli. And he's got a big hit. Bruised ribs right from the start. To the feet goes Paolo, plays it out to that right hand side. How did it go? Next to me, next to me. Levi, been operating superbly well with uh, Huddersfield in the Super League this year. It's Papalihi looking for an offload, flicks it away, keeps it alive. It's the other big fella down the middle, Junior Paolo. He keeps it alive as well. There's a hand there from Farmworth, which I think was pretty important because had he not. Be a knock on Samoa's head and feet at the scrum, but yeah. that got away. Again, the two offloads from the big lads in the middle, you know, created the numbers on the on the right hand side, and he was desperate to get his hand onto that ball because there was a clear overlap on the right hand side. So so here's the thing when you're playing against Samoa, you've got to be careful of the counter punch because whatever you do with them, Jonathan, they can find a pr process of play, offload, offload, and all of a sudden they're down a the sideline. We've seen their shape on the left. We see Farnworth had no, oppor uh, no other opportunity than to knock that ball down there or they're in the backfield. Well, he gives Samoa possession inside the England half here and a chance of ill take up. 40 metres out, Levi a dummy half, stands and plays, back towards the middle again. Big effort once more from Tuilangi. The West Tigers forward, he's off to Manly next year. It's picked up by Levi. Short pass again, they're just trying to bully their way through the middle at the moment, but they'll spread it wide soon. Here comes Levi, another set of six. Oh, big set. So suddenly Samoa have got a great advantage here. Six more tackles to have a go at this line. Sua put down, within sight. Levi up and delivers the pass. Papalihi decides to have a go himself. Three defenders doing the job. 
but they've plenty more work to do here. Levi once more spins it back. Milford out to Luai. Luai with a footwork. Trying to rip a hole. Drop the ball. Drop the ball. You can't play the game without the rugby league ball in your hands. He claims it was stolen, but it's England's head and feet. And that was the first test of England's concentration defensively because they're going to throw lots of different shapes and lots of different styles of football or Samoa. A good captain's challenge here, have we, Dave? Yes, we have. First captain's challenge of the tournament. So this is Robert Hicks who'll have a look at this. Every team has one captain's challenge per game. If it's successful, they keep that captain's challenge. It's challenge. If it's unsuccessful, please get they lose the right to challenge the referee for the rest of the game. So this is a big moment here. Big moment. I think Luai is claiming they had the ball knocked out of his hands yeah. rather than he lost it. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think that's what they'll look at. Yeah, I think they're looking at Wellesby. Wellesby made the tackle. I'm just waiting for replay. It's not something we see in Super League. It is something that um, is in the, the NRL and is now in the international game as well. Have you got another angle for me, please, Director? So are they adjudicating whether that ball is stripped by Watkins or he's lost control of the ball, Luai? The English player is just attempting to make a tackle. Yeah. Jerome Luai knocks the ball on. The challenge is unsuccessful. There we are. Okay, so it's a loose carry. Well, there you go. Unsuccessful challenge from Jerome Luai. McMeekin making the tackle, not stripping the ball. The referee's original decision stands. England's head and feed, and Samoa don't have another challenge to make now in this match. They've got nothing now. I think it was a strange call, a very early call in the game. The first time they've had an opportunity in England's 20. I thought, very rash call, I thought, because I thought it looked as if he'd lost control. There we are. Josh Andrew, that last well, it would be interesting to see what Coach Wayne's procedure is. Do you go to the captain and somebody who has an influence on the team, or do you let anybody, as Luai just, just thrown in this, I'm the captain, and it's a challenge. So England in possession, and they have a penalty. So it's going to be a kick to touch, which... Uh, Sam Tompkins will dispatch out there and gives England those bonus yards here. These are yards they don't have to work for. Wait here, guys! Wait! Wait! Well, I've been impressed with England's outside backs in the way that they're helping the forwards play in and around the middle and get forward against this Samoan team. So England looking to power forward. Tanya down on the touchline. You've got some injury news for us. We saw Braden hamlin Ueli coming off. He's in a lot of discomfort with uh, his left calf. He's got a large bag of ice strapped to it and looks pretty distraught and has been consoled by his teammates. Well, we're talking about tournament, not just matches, aren't you, when injuries come in like that. So players will be disappointed if it ends here and now but England looking to build again out of dummy half goes McElroy three to go in this tackle count for England Tompkins at dummy half here's Victor Radley Radley away to Williams Williams with a step can't get it away swamped by defenders last play who's at dummy half Hills at dummy half quickly re-establishes the kick from Wellsby has gone straight into the hands of Crichton Crichton's not got the pace to get the distance, surprised there. but he has he lifted the pressure on that Simone defence. I thought that he'd have the gas head, you know, just put his foot in the pedal and have a run. He was caught very, very easily. It was a poor kick from Wellsby, wasn't it? was, it? poor kick. So Samoa in possession. England leading 2-0. You'd say the dominant team so far, Brian Noble. A worry that it's only 2-0 from an English point of view? Well, for me, yes, but let's take the positives. They've been very positive. They haven't had any trouble going forward against the Samoan team. We've got lots of individuals, Radley, Farmworth, Makinson looking dangerous. Williams is looking dangerous when he takes... So staying at that end of the field is very important for England. This is the part of field you don't want Samoa to have the ball. That's the danger, that's the worry for England. The element of concentration and discipline that they need in defence. Well, it's the last play in the set here. What can they conjure up? The kick is from Milford. The chase is on. Tompkins will feel the pressure. Play on. No shepherding by Williams. I thought so that was... England get possession back again. Let's hear from a, a, a former England skipper down on the sidelines, Jamie Peacock. Thanks, Hulti. 
Yeah, I think it's just been a, an excellent start from England so far, based off the back of real strong carries from the outside backs and the forwards, but also again the detail right. England looked really, really well organised when they got the ball in their hands and attacking, and particularly in and around George Williams. My worry is though, two opportunities and miss both those opportunities. You don't get many within test matches to take those. Hopefully they can create some more off the back of those carries and the ability to be organised. Tonkey's on the inside, Matty Lees is on the field, he brings a bit of kapow, doesn't he? Matty Lees up to play, it's uh, Tomkins with a final kick at the end of the set. Oh, there's a chase on there, it's um, taken by Taboy Fidal eventually. I think when England have been happy, you know, they're, they're controlling the game, they're controlling the, uh, the areas where the game is being played, they haven't given Samoa any opportunities, you know, in their own 20, and again, I think he's forced the error once again. No, it's a penalty. It's a penalty. Penalty for Samoa. They needed that Samoa. They did. They haven't they, had any ball time really. You know, they've been cutting the ball out of, their, out of their own half all the time. They've only had four play the balls, you know, in, the, in the opposition 20 so far. So that's how dominant England have been. I'll tell you, it was interesting as well the body language of the Samoan side ahead of that six when they were trying to bring it out of yardage. A lot of players who are taking plenty of time to get back who looked a bit gassed at this stage. A lot, a lot of hands on hips. Yeah. That's a sign of fatigue, but they can explode into life. So you've got to be really careful. That's why the element of concentration for England has to be of the highest level. And as JP said from the sideline, you've got to take your opportunities. Sewer so up to play. Levi throws it to that right-hand side. Tapao is on the field, brings it forward now, but Hits again, three willing England defenders. Levi again, has a look right and left. There's some uh, big fellas out there, including Paolo, the, the skipper. Junior Paolo wants to play it as quickly as he can. Levi scampers, looks, there's a bit of a hole there, but it closes quickly. Last play again here for Samoa, 15 out. Last to go, it's back with Milford. Milford with the step, Milford with a chip, oh. and safely taken by Wellsby, and Wellsby's on his way. But just feels a bit of a bump from Luai. Yeah, so dangerous so those half the ground. Ball, ball in hand. You've got to close them down. You can't switch off defensively on the inside. You've got to keep pushing. I tell you what, for an opener, this is a brilliant matchup. All the things you strategists want to look in the game, but if you're just just tuning in on the on the channel, this I think you'll think, wow, what is this game? Across the line it comes, but Samoa's line is quick. And England's advantage is kept to a minimum. Here's Victor Radley. Radley with a carry. Last play. McAlorum. Back it comes to Williams. End over end kick. It's going to find the grass, is it? No, it's not. It's taken well by Tabuai Fidel. And Samoa start from there. Yeah, Robbie Hunter Paul, what are you saying? Well, we've just seen over the last seven to eight minutes, the last three sets from Samoa, England were absolutely swallowing up their go forward, so they've had to change up a few things. Danny Levi's obviously been, obviously been told to start to jump out of Akin half. He was one of the top meter makers out of Akin half in the Super League this year, and he's starting to cause some trouble in and around the ruck for England. Here's Levi again, still 10 metres short of the halfway line here, so England will be fairly satisfied with the lack of progress so far by Samoa, but... Like the fellas have been saying they've got so many ele electric players on that outside that anything can happen at any time. So power put down. Last play. Slow play. Slow play the ball. Very slow. Well, the, the blue number six is the danger for England. Luai, Jerome Luai, if he gets the ball in some kind of space with people outside him, then watch out. Milford's kick is a boom. It's uh, taken by Tommy Makinson. That's a poor, poor kick again. He had plenty of time. I think Radley hurt himself. He put pressure on Milford, and he's kind of on his haunches in, in backfield there, but that, he'll be disappointed with that kick. Watkins. I'll tell you what, he's had a great season, hasn't he, Callum Watkins? Oh, he's having a great game Salford. here as yeah, well, there. Playing in the centres, he's been playing second row this year. Oh! That's what this crowd wanted, wanted a spark to get behind this England side, and that guy has done a great support play, direct running, you don't usually see it from you know, one of the half-backs, but it was just 
you know, just well, it's the roll middle. your sleeves up, isn't it? There you go. Look at this. Here's the first effort from Watkins. Gets a quick play of the ball. Williams busts the line, and Wellsby's half-back partners on the inside to finish off the play. But Callum Watkins deserves all the credit there to get them rolling forward. Yeah, Tompkins goes well, and it's Williams. They'd be disappointed with that defence. Two players on a half-back, should have put him to deck. But he runs through the tackle and has a great half-back. Welby's on his shoulder there. Tompkins asks the questions, first of all. Great angle by Williams, great support. England try. Well, those people that love spine football, half-backs and full-backs will be crowing at the moment. Tompkins, Wellsby and Williams. One six seven in and around the middle, and it's oh, Tompkins hey. that exploits the middle. Sean Wayne liked it as well, didn't oh, he? Yeah. I think that's a special moment. Colin Maskell, the uh, tour manager, just behind him as well. Former Leeds hooker. Well, they needed that. You know, they needed that. You know, they're, they're in control of the game. They needed to come away with something. That's a fantastic point you made there, Jonathan, because they had all the ascendancy and only two points on the on the clicker on the billboard. And now that's six and going to eight. Second test appearance for Jack Wellsby. First England try. Here comes Makinson with the kick and puts it over. And eight points to nil. Suddenly has a, a little more of a comfortable feel for England and he's perhaps representative of what they've done so far. Totally deserved. Watkins has been outside. All the outside backs have found their fronts and this enables Sam Tompkins here to jump out, destroy a couple of Samoan defenders. Finds Williams on the fly through the middle, breaks a tackle, and Wellsbury's partnering crime up the middle. Yeah, quick play of the ball, the importance of quick, quick play of the ball. Tompkins spots it, goes at the, you know, dog leg defence. Well, in and around the rook, they yeah. were ordinary there, yeah, weren't they, they Samoa? Were, they were. Yeah, it's really slow with a restart here. I think they've taken them by surprise that they need a kicking tee. I'm almost worried in the press conference beforehand or through the week, Matt Parrish had said that we're a bit undercooked, we're a bit undercooked. Now, that can drift back to the team and sometimes give you, well, we're a bit undercooked, we'll wait for the next couple of games. It's all right saying they're undercooked, but, you know, we've, we've said this a lot, five or six or seven of them were playing in a grand final three weeks ago, so... I'm, no, I'm, I'm reinforcing what you're saying, Dave, I don't buy into that. No. You've got to go full on oh, right no. from the start. One of these English players, it's a long time since they played rugby league in anger, isn't it? Also, this you know, this is not a knockout game at the moment, right? Both these sides should go through, but you know, the draw is a lot harder if you don't win this game. Lose this game, you're likely to finish second, you're likely to play Tonga in the quarter. Oh. Oh. Scene and he has been absolutely brilliant. He can play in most positions and just watch the ball he gives Dom Young here. Just watch it. They come out, come on the short side, three on two, picks the right pass, and this has got a lot to do. He's got a lot to do. He just drifts inside the full back. Brilliant pace. What a try. What a try. Well, here you see it in the narrow. Here's Wellsby going at the line. What a pass, as you say, three on two. Dom Young still got to finish this. He's still got to be through early heels. Everybody's crowing about. I agree with you. Wellsby, Dom Young, Farnworth, they're superstars in the making. Oh, we've Wonderful. waxed lyrical, haven't we, before the tournament began about the sparkle in that Samoan lineup. And maybe we've just underplayed the sparkle in that England squad because they've done it twice now. I think. It previous internationals and in previous World Cups, the forwards have always been there, but we've missed that little spark compared to New Zealand and Australia in the back line, especially the back three. Now, you know, this kid, Dom Young, Wellsby, you know, they are looking a lot better. Makers have pops it over again. England are loving this. They're loving this. They lead by 14 points to nil. It's all going England's way at the moment. Yeah, totally deserved. Here we see that Wellsby goes into the line and releases Dom Young. He's still got Sal Suali to beat, which he does. And then he opens up those big legs of his and gets there. I agree. The outside backs for me, Makinson, Farnworth, Young, 
Watkins particularly and then the yeah. halfbacks have been outstanding on the platform that the forwards in the white shirts have provided for them they've had to do the tough stuff first well he's uh, he's having the time of his life at the moment is he Dom Young great season in the uh, in the NRL what was it 14 tries in 22 appearances this last year for the Newcastle Knights just a couple of games at Huddersfield before he uh, went down under to learn and build on his trade and it's obviously done him a world of good here's another man who's had a spell in Australia Mike Cooper Back with Wigan these days, and now Watkins will take it on. I think they've controlled the game, you know, very, very efficiently. And then, you know, we spoke about two opportunities. Uh, Jamie did, but they've scored two, created two, and they're in a good position now. Just keep on doing what they're doing. Back on the inside, Mike Cooper again. And there are those relatively fresh from the interchange bench. McLaurin at dummy half. Radley. Pass away back, was back, 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 back. asking a little bit there, wasn't it? McLaurin out of dummy half. This is the six, so it's the chip and the chase. Swelly, he's had a bit of a shaky game at the back with those bouncing balls, but this time he picks up safely enough. And Samoa start from there. England first class again with their exit strategy, so carrying the ball down the field, finding a short kick. They're in control of their defensive situation then. Everything going really well and to plan, you would have to say, for England. Is there going to be oh. something coming? from Sit that down. Samoan side and I think we just got our answer there from Julia Paolo crash bang wallop and now they go wider and again they untie themselves and England get cheap possession back again that's just forced in the past you know they, they haven't had much you know possession they haven't had good field position no you can see they forced that pass it wasn't on keep possession they're getting frustrated McAlorum England building again can they go back to back to back here with scores well, the, dis the discipline with which they're playing, Dave, I have no reason to believe that they can't, as opposed to what Samoa are doing. Radley. Victor, the inflictor, 15 away. McAlorum back to the inside. Wellsby, now Williams. The two major generals in the middle. Here's Farmworth. He's had a game. Every carry, every carry. He's taken it past that first tackle by another 5, 10 metres every time. Wellsby stops back again McAlorum Tompkins stops back again towards the middle keeping those Samoans guessing now it comes wide McMeekin tackle five here comes the last they're numbering up on this right hand side Wellsby and the pass away Tricks and Superman as Young flies in at the corner and England are wondrous just at this moment. Well, take a bow, Dom Young. That's a great finish on another outstanding Jack Wellsby pass. All in purposes, you think he's going to kick the ball, he doesn't. He finds out a Young who's got millimetres, centimetres to work in, but he ain't going to be stopped there. Here's the error that gives England field position, and that's something that Samoa do have to address. They're picking it up, they're like, they're like sharks, and they go, Wellsby at the line again, Watkins the threat, Young the pass, into the corner. I think on the previous play, previous play, there was an overlap. He's just ball-watching there. The way, uh, he's, he can't do that. You know, Paul Pierce can't just ball watch when I mean, he shows, he just keeps and runs the touchline. Well, he's found him, he knows he's there. He's got to go out and pick his man up. You know, that's poor defence by Samoa there. But again, Wellsby coming on the short side, inside runner holding the inside defence, and then a beautiful pass, the right choice. You know, brilliant, brilliant play again by England. Very comfortable at the moment. Oh, never mind, he's going to be a star in this World Cup. He is a star in this World Cup. He's just put his name in lights, hasn't he? Absolutely, but he's not on his own. But the fact that he, he finishes with such a plum, I think Wellsbury is as, as big a star as Jonathan points out. He's just the two passes he's just found in the last couple of series of plays have been outstanding. I think with Wellsby, I, I said I, I compared him to Gary Conley, which is a high accolade, but also no, I think there's a little bit of Yestin Harris in him. So if you get you know a mix up of those two players, well, Wellsby is a class act. And what about a kid Farnworth on the other side as well? well what, a, what a game he's having he's going so well. far. Well, oh. he watch his kick. I, I can't remember an England performance. We're only in the first half. Still a lot of, lot of games. I cannot remember an England performance as good as this for a long, long time. 
Uh, let's make it so the kick it goes wide. Sure, the World Cup last last time around 2017, that final, you know, the grit, the determination. But in terms of what they're doing here to a very good Samoan side. It's been a long time since we've seen this, Brian. To see Bradley there again, he has been very influential. He was, he was an inside shoulder, which gave the option for Wellesby to put the ball inside, held that defence, and then just a beautiful pass. I think they've, been, they've taken every opportunity. They've showed composure. So they play, you know, this is a brilliant, you know, 30 minutes from England. There are some debutants that are certainly making a name for themselves, aren't they? Not debutants, but new players. We mentioned that. Covid delayed this competition by a year. I think there are three players playing out there that might not have played a year ago for England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a year ago, Dom Young might have been playing for Jamaica, his country of heritage. His, his brother's playing for Jamaica, isn't he, in this tournament? Would Herbie Farmworth have been ready? Well, he's ready now. Tom he's ready a, now. Tom has had a good game as well so far, hasn't he? Yeah. And again, hold. That's it. Good decision. Hold on to it. McAloran picks up. Back to the middle, they come again. Morgan Knowles is on the field. Quick play of the ball. Expect only the very best from him in this uh, this tournament. Here's Williams. They're marching him downfield again here, but they're on the last play. England on the last play. That's not going to deter them to attack, though, is it? No, it's not. Wellsby, little chip over the top, trying to find a little bit of space, but it's uh, taken by Toho on that far side, and Samoa have it ball, ball back again. But look how close to their own line again. That's what they want to be, you know. We talk about the... Samoan back three. That's, we haven't seen him in attack. That's all they've done is carried ball up, carried ball up from a good set and a good kick to finish. Yeah, England, and that's down to England's game management. That's down to their discipline. I can't remember them making an error, England. And that's the discipline and concentration we spoke about at the start of the game that they needed. Well, they've passed that test with flying colours. Really slow from Samoa again at the back here. She's going to help England with their line speed in defence. They're really struggling to make yards here, these. Big Samoans just trying to get a bit of flash from Suolihi, who's doing well, who's oh, doing wow. really well, Suolihi. This is a kid who can dance oh. all, but he's lost the ball. He's lost the ball. I think he was looking for the support on the right hand side. It's a tremendous run by, by the full back, and he just looked up to see if there was support on the right hand side. Lost control of the ball. All that class. Oh. And then just suddenly clumsy. Another what? set of six here. That's a snapshot England. of why everybody before this World Cup was talking about yeah. that boy. That's just one snapshot. And if they can string some of that together, it's a whole lot tougher game for England. He's dropped the ball twice, though, hasn't yeah, he? Now? He has. McAloran. Dummy half. Then a man short as well here. Wellsby oh, no. interception, interception. Tay goes away. I don't think they're going to catch Isaac Tago. Tomkins will do his best, but Isaac Tago. They needed a gift. They got a gift. Samoa have their first try. It's the young Penrith Panther who's finally got them on the board. Does that lift their mood? We shall see. I was just about to say, so all England needed to do was have a settler, a settler set, because Swali so had made that break. They just needed to settle and get the kick into the corner once again. But unfortunately, Wellsby's looking for, you know, that pass. It's worked for him in previous occasions. Well, this time, he just picks the wrong man. Well, he's tried to go for it again, because yeah. he had Watkins and Young with an overlap. But Tego's had to pick his pocket there. He's had to go in the line, as we've seen there, and then it's a straight run-in with that kind of prowess. The difference there is, when they were on the front foot, you know, he's looking for it. He wasn't on, you could you could read that from the stand-up here. Yeah. And that's given Samoa a little bit of a, a chance. Well, I was about to say it's about the individual prowess Samoa. There's Wellsby's ball and Tago's picked Callum Watkins' pocket because they had a two-on-one, yeah. had they executed properly. So they have to be careful. We saw a snapshot previously. Sua, Sua Lee piling up the middle, Tago looking for an opportunity. They need to make sure with their necks at England that Samoa aren't given that opportunity yes. again. Yeah, they haven't created anything Samoa yet, have they? They've been too a lovely break by the fullback. So he and then just an intercept from Tego. So just first mistake really for England. Stephen Crichton settling himself here. Another of the Panthers in this Samoan side. Looking to add the two to the four to give Samoa a big lift as well. Less than five minutes to half time. Timing sometimes can be everything. And the kick is good. The flags are raised. 18 points to six. And suddenly England's dominance. 
not quite as much. But they're still dominant, and they shouldn't be distracted from going away from what they've been doing. That's the first error I can remember England made. Don't get me wrong, it's a double whammy. It's really costly because he picked, had his pocket picked, Wellsby. But they have to keep playing the same way England. I think they've been really good. Yeah, just, you know, don't chase it. There's no need that, that they've, they've played very well, controlled, composure, you know, good kick and chase. Have made many errors. You make an error, you get punished for it at this level. Yeah. I think Wellsby's keeping his record off of having a, a hand in every try so far. He has, as well. he has unfortunately, yes. He gets an assist for that one. Yeah. Points, points for Fantasy World Cup Rugby League, if that exists. Anyway, Samoa back, back in possession. Four minutes to half time. Is there a lift in their step? Mike Morgan Is there a, an extra optimism, confidence, positivity about that body language now as they bring it forward again? Top out. Seen him many times in New Zealand colours down the years, but like so many, electing to play for the country of heritage at this World Cup. Aloyae. Going through the tackles again, it's slow, oh, isn't it? From the play the ball, Milford. Left it comes. The step from Luai creates a bit of danger, keeps it alive. Milford's going as well. England players around him, they can't pin the ball down. Levi has it now. Danny Levi, he will be stopped. Okay. And that's tackle five, so one to go. I think Jesse went the wrong way, uh, Danny Levi there. Again, numbers on the right hand side. Top out, last play. Milford's kick. It's a challenge as well, but not for Makinson, who takes it safely. Well, it's the first time they've looked an element of threat there, isn't there, from Samoa? They have to be careful. A couple of times they've gone on the inside through Levi and Luai turned back inside a couple of times. Just don't quite look fluent, do they, Samoa? Flamworth again there, didn't make the yards, but again, a really quick play the ball, wasn't it? So, England on the front foot, making some, will continue to try and prize that advantage. The outside backs have been outstanding there. You, you can't separate them all. Whilst Young will get the headlines with his finishes, the work that they're all doing is tremendous. There's Knowles, Morgan Knowles. England looking wide, Williams is looking down the middle and got the support from making some forward pass. Pass. Thought he found the key to the door. But the door slammed shut with the referee's whistle. I didn't think it was forward. I think he was in a good position. As you can just watch him. He blew straight away. Back here. Tanya's got some injury news down on the sidelines. Yes, some more early in the wars here. Uh, Tabao Philo's come off. He looks like his day is done. He's got a lower leg injury. They hope it's not broken, but it's not looking good. Well, that's a shocker, isn't it? On the opening day of the tournament, that is bad news. You None of us want to hear that. Oh, wow. news. Levi comes left. Here's Tapao. Oh, offload. Luai's influence is just growing. Three offloads. Levi again. Milford. Both halves are just taking it on their shoulders now, aren't they, to try and open up this England defence. He was looking for a restart there on the set. The referee said play on. Levi. Jerome Luai. We're just getting a snapshot for our viewers at home. The team in blue have come to life a little bit There's in the last reset. five minutes. There's a reset. Minute and ten seconds to go. So England have got to defend this. Samar with an opportunity to narrow that gap again before the siren sounds. Oh, that's a brilliant catch. This time from Suolihi. And Suolihi, oh, England's defence recovers superbly. And boy, did it need to. Brilliant offload. I think it was Papa Lee in the middle of that. England are offside there. Certainly on the outside, Callum Watkins came rushing out, but they've escaped that. I think yes. a, a warning from Ashley Clyde. Got away with that one. Papalihi, uh, sorry. They're on. It was uh, Pavo, and then the kick to the Ingle area, but Brighton's not going to get there. Good in England player, take it out. Have a look at his face, Rick. Just have a look at his face. That's the answer. Oh, I, I, knew he had I knew he hadn't got there. I was just looking for an England player to take me out there. Confirm that he knocked the button. I'm so agreeing with you, Dave. That's how dangerous they are, though, isn't it? The offloads are coming in. Everybody wants Could the half-backs all of a sudden. Are picking their game up. They're Video taking up on the, tire on the front rowers. And they've got beautiful the feet, you know. From the kick, uh, Milford and, follow through. and Luai. Right, well, right side. side kick chaser on side from Samoa. The post, maybe okay, not play to, through, to please. Two players in blue on the inside of the kick are offside, but they're not involved. Shoulder to shoulder. Okay, can I get a close up now on potential Close's grounding up. and nice and slow, please? He's saying no infringement, isn't he? It's just about the grounding here. 
possession. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. Okay, can we, can we can I go back on that, please? But can we speed it up a little bit? Wow. It just goes blurry, so can we just play? Yeah. Stay at this speed, yep. Does he bounce it or does he? Yeah. is it in control? Yeah. There's no more pressure there. For yes, me. I think so. Can I have that angle again, please? That angle? Yep. Let's leave it to the video ref. Okay, I've seen all angles to make my decision. Thank you, director. It's a big one. 28 seconds at half time. This is a huge one. Which way is it going? Is he going to have to... No try. Knock on. Yeah, knock on. Knock on. That could have gone either way. England will breathe a sigh of relief, but there you go. I mean, that will give encouragement. Crichton wasn't right. far away there, was he? I think his body language gave it away a little bit. I'd have been a little bit more excited if I'd have, yeah. you know, yeah. done that. If it had punched the air, they might have given exactly. that try. Yeah. Yeah. Just to remind our viewers at home as well, they're just tuning in, that just shows the danger of this Samoan team. You cannot... And the, inter the importance of concentration and discipline at the international level. Yeah. As well as England played, if that had been adjudicated to be a try, they would score behind. It's Cooper with the drive, ten seconds remaining in this um, first half. It's been terrific from England so far, but we've seen enough from Samoa to suggest there's a second half performance from them. But the Hooter stands, it's all about England's backs in that first half. They have been sensational, not the least of them Dom Young with his two tries. Again, not the least of them Jack Wellsby with what he's created in that first half. But at half-time, England looking good. They lead by 18 points to six. Well, England have opened their World Cup with an engaging first 40 minutes in front of a enthralled home crowd. Dominic Young, the firebrand, with a first half double. This one was one of the best highlights of that first half for England, and they lead 18 to 6. Samoa just taking a little while to warm up at St James's Park, but the World Cup is underway. After the break, we'll have all the highlights from Newcastle. Now, a reminder today, a career-defining rematch for Australia's George Cambosis. He fights for revenge and all the belts against undisputed world champion Devin Hanley. You'll be able to scan the QR code on your screen to watch it live and exclusive on Main Event. Well, welcome back to Fox League. What a dream way to kick off a World Cup on home soil. England, they lead 18 to 6 over Samoa and their coach, Matt Parrish, did warn us before kickoff. He said, look, don't expect the strength on paper to translate immediately. Samoa may be a little bit rusty, but what we're seeing at the moment is all England. It was a little bit opportunistic from Samoa, latching onto an intercept, but 18 to 6, a pretty heavy, handy halftime score for England. Michael Ennis, Greg Inglis, did you think that England would burst out of the blocks like this? Oh, well, they're playing England, England brand of footy over there, right? Yeah. Getting off the line speed, um, off the line very quick, running the ball hard, getting down, playing the ball. What they, you know, what English is football's about is an aggression and they can't keep up with it. Uh, so Mal can't keep up with it, which creates this here. Creates opportunities, creates this here. And, you know, England just playing their style of footy. Yeah, look, I thought it was a terrific start from the English side. I thought uh, Samoa come out a little tired, a little flat, and they started to fall away defensively through that mid part of the half, and it was Jack Wellsby who's come into the England side that really stepped up. Uh, I thought Tompkins was terrific around the ruck when it started to speed up, and him and Wellsby uh, you know, caused havoc in that first try, and then it was Wellsby down this right-hand side edge where he's, he's absolutely carved Samoa's left-hand side, setting up a couple of tries for Dominic Young, and... Fonny's going that well. Wellsby decided to set up a try as well for <laughs> Samoa. He laid on a beautiful pass there for Isaac Tungo, who raced 80 metres to score. And all of a sudden, uh, things started to swing Samoa's way. And Stephen Crichton, uh, a failed opportunity in the final minute to get the ball down. But I feel like even though it's 18-6, Samoa would be reasonably pleased at half-time. The, the gap's only 12, but... Yeah, it was a tremendous start from England. The commentary said Jack Wellsby and Dom Young, it's circus tricks and Superman. And Jack <laughs> Wellsby, he's already a star in the Super League. You know this really well. Now he's ready to show the rest of the world what he's made of. What makes him so versatile and so useful? I think he just goes under the radar. You know, he can play fullback, he can play uh, lock, he can play back row, centre, five eight. He's and he's aggress aggressive um, defence as well. So he can read the play. These two tries that he set up. He swung around the short side. He's got his man to tie up the um, centre and five eight, and then he's already playing the short side. So he's playing lines up footy, mm. but you know his ability to do that and versus 
his versatility around the, around the park makes him so dangerous in the squad. Jack Wellsby, definitely one to watch so far in this Terrific. World Cup. What about Dominic Young? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's the great thing about this World Cup, is opportunity, right? Because Wellsby probably wouldn't have got a start either if Johnny Lomax was fit. He's dominating out there on the world stage. But Dominic Young, what a revelation he's been. He had a great year. I think he scored 14 tries right. out of 20 games for Newcastle this year. And all in this, this fashion where he's just so strong and so big on his, out on his edge. But it's been his instinct and it's been his speed that's been... Um, a real highlight and caught his opposition uh, unaware at times. He's been tremendous and that finish there on the back of that lovely pass from Wellsby, that was special from Young. He's Look, coming from Newcastle, nice and Newcastle, where his hometown is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Newcastle. working for him. <laughs> the locals in. are absolutely loving it. 40,000 at St James's Park. It is England. They lead 18 to 6 over Samoa. Now, do not forget, after this second half, it is the Aussies. They open their World Cup campaign in a few hours' time. You're watching Fox League. Welcome back to Newcastle at St James's Park. A glorious World Cup opener so far for the host nation England. Jack Wellsby has announced himself to the rest of the world. A first half double for Dominic Young. It is England they lead 18 to 6 over Samoa. Here are your World Cup commentators. Well, so far, so good as far as um, England are concerned. Samar will feel they've got plenty to fix up in this second half. There he is, the star of the show so far tonight because of his two tries, Dom Young. By the way, there are so many opportunities to uh, experience this World Cup over the next five weeks. England's next match, by the way, is um, in Bolton against France next week. You can see that on this very channel that you're watching right now, but I think there's one or two tickets still available. Off we go, second half to determine the opening favours of this opening game. England, not necessarily in the box seat, but looking very strong at the moment, leading by 18 points to six. Jonathan Davis and Brian Noble alongside. How do you see this second half going? Well, I think it's important the start of this second half for England, more so than Samoa. I think they've got to re reinforce all the things they've been doing. As an example of that, the white shirts carrying the ball so hard and so fast, getting around their front foots and kicking the ball well. Yeah, just same as the first half, really. Just uh, controlled, you know, no errors, playing in the uh, Samoan half, turning the big forwards, but they've controlled the Samoan forwards. You know, they haven't had much go forward or quick play the ball. So, you know, you haven't seen the best of the Samoan attack yet, purely because of the English performance. Last tackle in this opening set. England finding themselves kept retained inside their own half. So Tompkins with a big boot trying to get things downfield. But here comes the threat straight away with the, the return. So early, he, well, he ran with some determination there, didn't he? Well, just, you just, as a rug, rugby league fan, you just look at what he does and you think, wow. You know, just doesn't run through people though. You know, that's the thing. He hasn't tried to step once yet. Such a big lad for a full back. Just so powerful. He's only 19 years of age. He was given a special dispensation to play as a 17-year-old in the NRL. Normally, you've got to be 18, but uh, they made a case for him, and he's been making a case ever since. So Samoa starting strong in this second half. Crichton down. Toho stands and waits at dummy half. Spun across that line. Here's Marty Tapa. Last play, last play in the set. Levi delivering left again. Here comes the threat because they're going through hands. They're going through hands. They're going to risk it this second half. They have to, but England get it back. And whilst England regroup, let's uh, find out some of the news from half time. Tanya, what can you tell us? Well, Sean May, not surprisingly, really pleased with that first half. He's warned them not to overplay, keep defending your yardage, keep them away from her try line, but overall, extremely happy. Matt Parrish, though, not at all happy. They had all the ball. We didn't play well enough. England deep. When has that stopped them to try and attack so far in this game? Brian Noble, you've, you've been uh, delivering a hint of caution at half-time for England fans, haven't you? 
Only in that they've got to replicate what they did in the first half. My, my caution comes from the team in blue, because we know what they are capable of. It's up to England to replicate what they did in the first half and stop them able to get into the right parts of the field to show that. Yeah, the danger came when the you know the half backs, some more half backs, you know, took on the forwards and quick feet, got behind the first defensive line, and then they started to offload. So England on the last again. Kick from Wellsby to reach. The take is safe enough from uh, Tego, but he's not going far. He's not going far. Morgan Knowles is very good at that kind of thing, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's um, and he's been a standout player in the Super League all season. The 17 for England. Many people would have put him in the starting lineup. But I think Victor Radley's shown why he uh, he gets the nod. He's got a big game, Radley. Huge game. Here's Paolo. Junior Paolo, and offloads again, Levi, and he's dragged to the ground, he's not going to be offloading, try it if you want, Danny, but you're going to the ground, now they go left again, Milford to Luai, and there's a bit of width there, but Watkins closes him down, the ball's gone to ground, and England will come up with possession again on well, that far side. That's a mark of what England's outside bats have been doing really well defensively, they've let the play explore, they've let the player ex be exposed for the flanks and then they've covered up well and managed to create or force errors on the three or four times that Samoa have got to the fringe. Yeah, I think it uh, fell awkwardly and I think his hip, he's hurt his hip, there's another injury for Samoa, not looking good. But just, just look at the defensive line here, they know what he's doing, just putting the drift defence and showing him the outside. Oh, it felt just awkward there. Twisted his knee right yeah. at the death, didn't he? I mean, it's a great tackle from Watkins. He's got him side on, but Tyrone May just buckles under the weight of Watkins' challenge, and that looks not good. By the way, if you were with us uh, much, much earlier, and it seems like a lifetime ago now, the uh, the opening, not the opening ceremony, the tournament welcome, they uh, they called it. It was, um, it was disastrous, really, if you watched it. Uh, but the Rugby League World Cup have put out a statement apologising sincerely apologising for the disrupted tournament welcome. If, if England carry on like this, I don't think anyone will care, will they? Uh, well, this is the main event. I said at the start of the game, don't be distracted by what's happened there. It's all about what goes on the field, and both teams have aimed up and are creating the billing we thought they'd have. I'd say this is a big moment for Samoa here because they've already lost a couple of players, haven't they? Yeah, I think uh, Jim Gray mentioned in studio that... Uh, you know, they've got, they've got a 15 players now, I think. That's going to be, you know, affecting their interchange. You know, he's, he looks as if he's definitely going off with a hip or a, or a knee injury. And this will be really kind of, especially the last 20 minutes of the game, you know, where the, fat, the fatigue will kick in and they're looking for the, uh, you know, the bench to make an impact. Well, well, England have been working them over as well. They've yes. been highly disciplined in where they've performed. They made one error, which was the Wellsby intercept. Um, so, yeah, it's, the hill gets a bit bigger for Samoa. You've just got to, you know, I think England have been very competent. That's all they've done, you know, they've, they've been solid, they've got good yardage, they've had quick play the ball, and then they've had a good kick and chase game. And that's kind of simple, basic stuff, which they've done extremely well. On the, on the back of that as well, you look at then a couple of moments of magic or brilliance, which usually comes from Australia or New Zealand. But we've waited a long time for these boys. Wellsby's come through another Dom Young as well. And what a finish this is. You know, absolutely brilliant. Comes on the inside, beats the Wonder Kid, and all of a sudden, just try and catch if you can. That's a brilliant finish. Well, we have a habit of getting carried away. Woodsy's excitement infuses us all, but I genuinely feel that with people like Dom Young and Herbie Farnworth and... Tommy Makinson and Callum Watkins and the old, Callum Watkins the old stager and the Haas particularly, you know, Will, Williams, Wellsbury, they're world class players. Do you think? The good thing of that, you've got to make, you know, you've got to make defenders make decisions, and that's what they've, that's what they've done, England. And unfortunately for Samoa, left wingers come in, you know, he was, he was, they were short the numbers on the first try, on the second try, you know, he should keep an eye on this kid. He was ball watching, beautiful pass try. This is Tyrone May, isn't it? Who's, um, who's down here? Yeah. He hasn't so, actually moved, does he? No, he's, um, he's getting the duty of care here, as, as all rugby players of both codes get these days, don't they? Get um, looked after. 
down on the sidelines. And it's Spencer Linier who's um, preparing to come on. That's not exactly like for like. Matt Parridge has got concerns right at the start. Jeff Tooby alongside him there. Former Manly coach. Came over here with a World Club challenge. He's uh, having a chat. And the concern as well is not just this match now, it's this tournament, isn't it? Because you know, this looks like yeah. a serious injury. I think it's his hip, to be honest. Just watch. Again, brilliant defence. Show him the outside and get him. I think it's the... I think he's holding the back of his knee straight away. Just watch. It's a nasty... Yeah, that's in a position it didn't want to go into. No, nasty, nasty. I'm picking up on your point about the tournament, and it can be disruptive, can it? Because they, they've lost a play with a suspected broken leg earlier yeah, in the game. Yeah. What was that? Next week they uh, they come up against Greece, which, um, in full respects to Greece, is a match they should win with some of their uh, lesser lights, so to speak, and then they've got France the week after that, which... That's the big game, isn't it, for yeah. them? No, on the back of this. If this stays like this is, or improves from an England point of view, that's a game that Samoa simply will have to win to qualify. So a huge, huge collective round of applause from fans all around the stadium, an appreciation of the tough game that these, these players play. Injuries are inevitable. And Tyro May goes off. Lenio comes on. Jamie Peacock, what are you saying? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge loss for some all that. I think chasing a game when you're down to 15 instead of 17 players just makes it more a big bonus. For You That's can hold penalty. your line. You can hold your line as a defender. There's nowhere near the ball. Player. They've only got 10 seconds, by the way, to make that captain's challenge. And they can only do it when the game's stopped as well. You can't suddenly say, hey, ref, you missed a forward pass there as somebody's breaking down the middle. Levi. Samoa. Making ground. First meeting in a World Cup between these two, by the way. They have played each other in three other events. England have uh, won all three. Step and go from Tega. Step, go and stop as the England defenders come in. Luai back to the middle again. Milford offers it back on the inside to Powell. Trying to push his way through. Five gone, one to go. One play to go in the set here. Samoa is still a long way out. Milford will kick, hoping for a mistake. Makinson, impeccable. Easy. Well, it's a kick with hope, isn't it? It's not a kick with purpose. Yeah. They hunted it's him a down. Kick. Now they've got to try and restrict England's territory here if they can possibly do that. But England have not had any problems getting out of their own half. They've got a kick to compete, don't they? They need the ball now. You know, they're three scores behind. They just need to get something, put some pressure on. Oh, Young's dropped it this time. He's human. He's human. Well, it's other than the intercept, that's the first one. A bit of a blow-up going on in the middle as well here. Yeah. Let's look at this. It's a... Well, that's a straightforward drop. Straightforward drop, but there was uh, some frayed tempers in the middle for some reason. Great uh, pictures, those, weren't they? The facial expressions on the drop. Still going, still going. I think it's popped. Papali here and uh, Sam Tompkins. So. Well, the only team that can lose out here if they get to get distracted is England. So yeah. keep your head on. Yeah, he is there. There he goes, Papali and Tompkins there. Come on, guys, scrum. Let's go. No, on. no one's going to throw any punches in today's game, and that's why Tompkins has a go, I think, because he knows there's nothing's going to happen. It's a mismatch. I don't know. Sam can throw him a bit. I know you. Josh Papali was uh, considering be becoming a priest in earlier life. 
I think he's just saying, God, God bless you, my son, let's get on with it, shall we? <laughs> he looks like one of the nicest fellas out there, doesn't he, Josh? You wouldn't, want to, you wouldn't want to rattle his cage, but he looks like a nice fella off the field. He bashes you to the ground, <laughs> forgiving you. You can see that the ball, we never... problem with the balls today for some reason. Here we go again. Finally, Let's ball back on the field. That's the silly ball, all right? Let's play footy. All right, we've got a scrum move, centre field. England have to be real good here. What has Samoa got in the tank? Well, this is a real test for England's defence and a real test for Samoa's resolve. Have they got the character to climb back into the game? They've certainly got the skills. So Ali, he's put down. Crichton steps up at dummy half, a full set on this English line. Back to Milford. Loy offers it off to Tapao. Tapao dragged down eventually, is he? Yes, he is. Hell has to play it, can't offload. Levi picks up, comes back right to Milford. The short pass. Sua simply chopped to the ground. Bit of a tangle there. Off they get, up they come. This time it's Linu. Linu held up short. Getting close, getting close. Comes with Levi. Levi, oh, in, in front of the dummy half, was it? Yes, it was. Clearly, someone getting hold of Levi's hands there. Penalty for some. No, no need for it, no, at the moment. It's a good test for England, this. Yeah. They've got to have the line tested throughout this World Cup, and no more so now. They get into the rhythm, understand what's being thrown at them, and make good decisions. That was clearly a penalty. Tompkins. Advancing too quickly. So another set of six. Driven in by Topal. First one stopped. Again, it's slow because I think Topal is so slow, so slow. Now it comes back to that left hand side. Luai looking to create the numbers. Toho, power and pace in his boots. But not when you're running at four England defenders who just want to grab a hold. Well handled. Levi goes out. Oh, and they dropped it again. Papali, he was not expecting that pass. It's been a lethargic performance. I think you know the, there's no crispness in the passing. If the, the pass is slightly behind you, he takes the the whole pace out of the movement. Well, I think it's disconnect. Yes. Papali, he was was wanting to do something else. I think he wanted to go underneath, so around the other side from Levi. Look, see how yeah. he drops off. Inside ball, he wanted. And there's just so there's a lack of communicate. Levi clearly wants him to go straight. And, Cause some problems there, and that's the disconnect. That's the um, maybe the undercooked bit that uh, Matt Parrish was talking about. Lee, but Rad Lee, fix that. Lee Radford's there as well, the uh, the cast of a coach working for the opposition. Uh -huh. England back in possession, just back in control yeah. of a game they've looked really good in. So just far. need to clear the lines here now, just take the ball up, you know, settle, and get a good kick in. You don't need to do anything silly. Cracking opener to this World Cup. England knowing how important this match was, not just in terms of their potential passage down the line, but also in terms of setting up this World Cup tournament. And they've done that so far. Williams showing a bit of the form he produced at Canberra a few years ago. Not had the best of seasons at Warrington this last year. Out of dummy half, kick downfield, Crichton catches but finds a willing Baby, wall Baby. in his way. Yeah, we're in that process. England need to continue with what yeah. they're doing. Samoa need to push the, the board out a little bit there, so they're going to be a bit more... The team in blue are going to be a bit more expansive. Was that a penalty? penalty. Yes. And again, there's no need for it. No discipline slowly, you know, going, fatigue, giving field position. They will chase the game now, Samoa. They'll have to chase the game. They get a little bit looser with the, with the offloads. Tap and go. And here they come. And just back on the field is Junior Paolo. Again, looking to promote the ball from within the tackle, but he was pinned as he did so by the efforts of Thompson. Samoa edging forward at the moment. Good line speed defensively from England. Very good. Test of resolve of attack and defence. Paolo once again with that short pass, they dropped it again. They've dropped it again. They're going to have to learn to catch the ball if they're going to do anything in this World Cup. Well, that must be the sixth or seventh. 
I'm not one for completion rates, but you can't play this way if you're expecting to win an international no. game. England are too good today. They haven't, had any, they haven't really built any pressure to ask questions of the English defence. Oh, this is interesting. There's a shot clock on here. They've only got a certain number of seconds to get themselves packed down. Samara, very, very slow to get up there. Just had the enthusiasm and energy just sucked out of them today. Here we go. Got there in time. Farmworth. Trying to put the step on. Wellsby. Watkins. What a performance. What a year he's had, Callum Watkins. Start of the year, nowhere near an England shirt. End of the year. An absolute dead cert pick. Fantastic year. Williams has played well. The outside backs have played well. Step back on the inside. By Hill. He's taken them closer. He's made an extra step or two, an extra little bit of an effort. Now it's with Knowles, Morgan Knowles, and they go left. Tompkins chiming in, Farmworth scoops it up. Tom, Tommy Makinson's been asked plenty there, but Things keeps it in play for the yeah. foul on Sam Tompkins. It's a lead hit on Sam Tompkins here. Yeah, this could be a yellow card. I think they're quite strict on this kind of tackle, protect the half backs of the game. A late hit, blindside hit. I think you take two points here as well. Yeah, I would as well, definitely. Two points gives you a four-score lead, doesn't it? Yeah, that's late. That's that. late. That's a, you know, that could be a yellow card. They've come down very, very heavily in the NRL on this. The late cheap shot, blindsided. Oh, yeah. So oh, late, oh, so late. Yeah. He's got to go for that. Yeah. He's got to go. Oh, I mean, he... Go and have a rest. Go and have ten minutes. Milford, isn't it? Here it's we go. Anthony Milford. Okay, that tackle is unacceptably late. Go in the bin. He's in the bin. He's in the sim bin. He had to go. Ten minutes in the sim bin. Anthony Milford. That's over here, um, Tommy. Tommy. Well, they're a bit like a chamois leather at the Come moment, in. aren't they? Somali, the end, end bits are just not good. Little bits of rubbish in their game, they're just I, I don't know where you, I didn't bit. know where you were going in with that. No, no idea. to be honest. I, I have no idea. I had, I, I'm still not sure. It's, to be no, but it's, all, it's all just raggedy, isn't it? Wet, <laughs> just not what they want. You know, it's just not the complete performance. Yeah. It's nowhere near. The ill-discipline, the ill-discipline with the ball, yeah. the ill-discipline in defence there, it just doesn't win your football games. No. It looks, they look like a side now that kind of realise the big game is France. It's a bit harsh on chamois leathers, though, isn't it? <laughs> In a crisis, they can be terrific. Tommy Makinson with a chance here to give his side a four-score lead. As it stands now, the mathematics, Samoa have to score three tries and kick three goals to get level. This will take it into four-try territory if he's curled it in. Oh! Uses the post, bounces in, and he's got there somehow. Yeah. And England now lead by 26 points to six. Yeah, not as, not as clean a strike, but same as that, two points. Well, I think England will kick on now. Oh, that's terrible. That's cheap. It's whiplash, that, isn't it? And then that kick. Well, I mean, for our viewers watching, that's why they're there. They've protected the halfbacks that play the game with the hit lane. The, the whiplash injuries are often more dangerous than the contact part of it. The whole body relaxes, doesn't it? And then somebody hits you like that. So, England looking fairly confident now. 26 points. To, I'm saying now, look fairly confident from minute one, but that scoreline now with the time ticking on. Here we go. He's looking very good from their point of view. Just watch him again. You know, the forwards, the backs are taking the ball up. First of all, Farnworth, now it's Callum Carla, Watkins. They need the halfway line, and it's a penalty again. They're just, it's just falling to pieces at the moment some more. And it's England there. are good. England are dominant. England are doing all the things that they've been asked of. It's about 43,000 in here today. 43,199 to be exact. We've, we've counted them all. 16 minutes to play. England in the driving seat and looking for more. Yeah. This now is a big effort from Thompson. 
Victor Radley playing in the uh, the, uh, the dummy half position now. Chris Hill takes it on. England are looking for more. They want some more. It's pumped out towards Herbie Farnworth. And Herbie Farnworth is the latest starlet to make a name for himself. There's the try. There's the celebration. And there's and there's the England win. Well, he thoroughly deserves that. He's been outstanding all afternoon. Herbie Farnworth, he gets the one-on-one -on -one opportunity because Samoa is short of numbers and he's going to beat anybody. He just took the outline on his defender and he couldn't be stopped from five metres out. How often is a bouncing ball, you know, dangerous? Scott ball goes aground again. Kitchen's come in, he's exposed his inside player and he's just run a great line, really. Just watch it, ball's on the floor. Now, number four, Crichton's gone in. He goes late. It's just an easy finish, really. He's too big, too fast. Yeah, just really easy finish for Farnworth. There's another Samoan player on the ground in just they were short in the defensive line once again. He's got to kick on now. Next, just be absolutely clinical now. Next, last 15 minutes, just put some more to the sword. Well, they, are, they have been good. I they think so, sometimes the nervousness over England performances over the years has been that they let teams back into things, but they've clearly been dominant today. As I've said before, I think it, the New Zealand and the Australian sides have had the advantage on the outside backs, maybe. You know, but the, the whole England team, the forwards have laid the platform, and the backline as well have, have come in and done some special things. Very, very solid performance. This is just the start of it. So many matches to look forward to. But England have christened this tournament in sensational style. Tommy Makinson steps back, rolls up, sends it goalward, over it goes. His kicking has been superb today, it's been very much a part of this. And England 32, Samoa 6 is a scoreline that England fans could have barely dreamt of earlier today. Well, there you see the bounce pass for Farnworth. The defender was going. It's just be pessimistic about this game, won't they? It really, but you know, England very, very dominant performance so far. There's just been a quiet confidence coming out of the England camp. I mean, you talked to Sean Wayne as we did in the build-up today and earlier in the week about the, the strength of this Samoan side and the star quality of this Samoan side, and he's kept saying, "Yeah, they're good, but we've got some good players as well." And he's right. He's right. And that's the way you should approach it. He understands working with them day in, day out. What a quality team this England is. Johnny Lomax would have been in the side, but he's injured. Alex Wormsley would have been in the side, but he's injured. Mark Percival would have been in the side, but he's injured. That tells you the strength of depth in English rugby league at the moment. Five gone, last to, play, last to play. Williams again. That boot of his, trying to cause problems, and, well, it did cause problems for Suwalihi. Didn't know whether to stick a twist in the end, he had to concede the dropout. He had to play it. The ball, the last bounce just checked, and Williams was right behind him, so he had to play that ball again. His best shot, wasn't it? Big, big part of the game as well. Injury assessment here. Dropout is short. Samoa wants it back. And they get it back. No, they don't. Didn't get over the 10 metre line. It's a penalty right in front of the sticks for England. Take two more. I would, yeah. Time off the clock. Yes, good then. I understand that. Well, this is uh, this is um, the fact that there's a discussion going on here tells you that they want more points. They don't want two. They might want six here. Well, they're not going for points. Let's go. Yeah, they tap. They go. They go. They go. Never mind the two. We want the six. You know, on the field, you know how the defence are. I think they know they can score now. 
big muscular effort from Whitehead. Has he got in? Oh, look at that for a celebration. He'll tell you I'm over. It's been all about the fancy backs. Yeah, what about the big bruisers? Has he got yeah. a try here? Well, I think he has, and I think this is route one. This is Elliot Wyatt saying, I've got the number seven Video ball straight to the try line, and I'm Video going over and you aren't stopping me. Can we get a I think nice he gets it down, close I think he sticks up his hand out and shoves it down. All angles to see grounding, need to see vision of the ball, please. Yeah, just lose sight of the ball from the foot there for a second. Have you got one from the other side, the touch judge view? Uh, yep, we'll just freeze frame right there. Thank you. Yeah, Elliot Whitehead maintains possession, grounds the ball. Thanks, director. That's a try. He knew he scored. Try confirmed. There you go. Try confirmed. 36 points to six. Nobody, yeah, nobody be. could have expected this, could they? They'll be happy with that. Elliot Whitehead. Alala should have done a little bit better there. There's three Simone defenders, but this is Elliot Whitehead saying, stop me if you can. And they couldn't. I think, yeah, I think the most, the most pleasing thing for England would be it. You know, how they've stopped giving opportunities, you know, to Samoa side. They're a very, very dangerous side. You know, with all those Penrith Panthers backs, half-backs, you know, ball, ball carrying forwards. But they haven't been given the platform and the field position to launch the attack. And that's, I think that's been the most pleasing for England, the total control. The the ball ball sticks him. it over. Seven out of eight now. 38 points to six. Some more of health. I'm not taking any, anything away from England's performance. No. I think it's been clinical, sharp, exciting as well at times with the ball movement. But certainly, some more have contributed to their own downfall. Well, they've uh, put a marker down, haven't they? More England. Than a marker. Yeah, more here than we a go. Marker. Still got 10 minutes left to play. England could fill their boots here, couldn't they? Oh, we've, got to, we've got to be seeing better of Samoa in this World Cup, haven't we? You, you'd expect them to respond. I mean, the way it's seeded, the, the, the form lines would suggest a Samoan Tongan quarter final now after this. And that's going to be a heck of a, a display. But Samoa have got to get themselves back up and running before then. Here comes Mickinson. Going to go on the outside. He's got the pace. They're queuing all forward pass. No, the referee says play on. The referee says play on. And Elliot Whitehead. Whitehead with a second. English Rugby League is having a party. He's having a party. We're getting a new tags of favourites after this performance. Whitehead on the inside. Makinson down the outside. Smashes down the sideline. Throws the ball in fit. There were four or five white jumpers there, Jiffy. They weren't not going to score there. That just sums it up for me, the whole game, really. Just watch. Pass by George Williams. All right, let's have a little look at it. Tish Crichton on the outside. Look at the support play. Any number of English players could have scored there. And that, for me, has just summed up this performance. You know, the, the desire of the English players from the, from the start, I think. Great break from Makinson. Yeah. In one hand, plenty of six wide jumpers on the inside. He could have taken his pick. Farnworth jockeying him along. I thought he could have... I think Farnworth looked at the referee and said, whoop, that's forward. And then he said, no, it's not, he's not calling it. I think Sean Wayne said the yeah, same there. He thought said. it was a forward pass. He was sitting down. Well, I tell you, if you've not got tickets for these England games of this World Cup, what are you doing? Get yourself sorted out, because this, if you're an English rugby league fan, all roads lead to Bolton next week. This could be a very, very special few weeks. Making some with a kick, over it goes. 44 points to six. Who looked in the tea leaves this morning and saw this as an outcome? Well, not me. I did expect an England win because I thought their blueprint of last week, their warm-up game, they showed their prowess. 
I think the coach deserves all the credit. He's picked the right team. He's given the right messages. They've executed those messages, and they've been totally dominant this afternoon. Yeah, it's been it's a it's been an all-round performance by by the English side. I, I think that you know Victor Radley has has been immense. He's a great addition, you know, to this um, to this England side. Oh, and there they go. They put it out of play. Penalty back on the halfway line. Just falling a bit now, aren't they? Jamie Peacock, I mean, you've been involved. We go back to 2006 when you were involved in that, that Great Britain victory over Australia in Sydney. Do we have to go back as far as that for a, a performance as good by England or Great Britain since? Yeah, I just think for the England team, it's as good as it gets. You, you want to lay a mark down for the tournament. And I just think the players should take a bow from 1-17. to 17. Every player, I'm trying to think of one player that's a standout, but it's difficult to do because every player's been involved, everybody's had an involvement. And I think before the game, we were talking about Samoa being a team full of superstars. Well, the England performance has made them look like a, a rabble full of individuals. It's just been outstanding from all of them. It's exceptional, it's proud to be... Williams with a kick to the corner, here they the go! Lead. Nakinson! Nakinson! The latest to join the celebrations! Muted for the moment because the referee's going to the big screen. He thinks try on the field. Tommy Nakinson uh, is certain it's it. try on the field. So that, um, it is a try on the field. He's gone back down. Brilliant. Was it Williams with the kick? Yeah, early kick Brilliant. as well. You know, I, yeah, I think I agree with, I agree with Jamie. I think even have I've been very, very good. We'll but, you know, some more for me have been very poor. But they've been made to look poor before because of a dominant England, you know, performance. And you're talking... Yes, please. New Zealand and Australia will be a total... Kettle of fish. You've got to enjoy players. this performance and just saw and build on it. Let's Great go, finish. Let's just, I mean, just, just go through that Samoan team. You know, Isaac Tago winning a grand final for Penrith a couple of weeks ago. Stephen Crichton, likewise. Brian Toho, likewise. Jerome Luai, likewise. This is the cream of the NRL. Yeah, left side kick chases well, this is the way so it's been made to look through here. I want to the, make sure the there's no interference. The Samoan team has been out threaded again there because you've got Farmworth pushing uh, at the line and White are pushing at the We're line. We're going to go through freeze close up on ground down the touchline, please. Can you please. Can that, get a camera down the touchline and pick up on grounding. The full back isn't in the picture. Good finish. Clean pick up, remains in the field of play. Thank you, Director. I've seen all angles to make my What's decision. What's the judge doing there? You should call that straight away. That's a try. I need to go to the video ref. Take a bow, Tommy. The latest try scorer. And a chance with a kick from the touchline to make this a half century. Unbelievable. That is literally unbelievable. Truly. I think there's an element... Me and, you, me and yourself were talking dead before the game. An element of nervousness. In the <laughs> What are we gonna, what are England gonna do? Well, this has been brilliant for England. Well, one of the options today that people were thinking, well, a good England performance in a tight defeat against Samoa would be good. <laughs> yeah, you know, you looked at the team sheet and you thought, right, this is gonna be a close game. But, you know, the game isn't played on paper, so England have been absolutely brilliant today. And I think, again, it's the not allowing, you know, the big Samoan forwards to run at them in their own kind of 20 10 meter area. I think it's been a very great tactical performance, you know, by the by, by England. And remember, the only points that Samoa have scored today have come off an England pass. Makinson's kick, look at that, look at that, flies like an arrow through the northeastern skies and lands and gives England a 50 points to six lead against Samoa. Simply unthinkable two hours ago. Now it's the stuff of daydreams. And there's still five minutes to play. There could be more. Well, we said they've got to, you know, keep on playing, keep on going out to Samoans. You know, they shot the bits of Samoans and now the tries are coming, you know, very, very easy for England. I think you two have to pick man of the match today, don't you? Get your heads together, you've got to pick a man of the match.
soil. England are determined and they have the star quality to match that determination. They're totally dominant, haven't they? One to 17. Watkins, Williams, all outstanding today. All the outside backs impacted. You've always said that England have been positive, you know, have been strong, been dominant in the forwards, but unfortunately, you know, they've lacked that try scoring killer instinct. Today, I think that will this will give England so much confidence in their offensive play. They are they're confident with the attack, with the defensive play, with a kicking game. I know this will be huge for them. You know, to score this amount of points in a World Cup. They, the, the, the defence is very, very poor, you have to say. But, you know, you have to score these tries against a good side. They've simply kicked, run, passed, tackled the stuffing out of Samoa today. Nine out of ten so far, Tommy. I didn't think he. I don't think he would have thought today he'd been attempting eleven kicks at goal. Here he comes. Hoofs it again. Or well, not? Not quite this time. <laughs> and the boos, the good-natured boos from the England crowd. Yeah, the try again. That's too easy. You know, they're not so short in numbers on the short side. Lewis on the wing there, I don't know where the Samoan defenders have gone. By my reckoning, Sam Tompkins is the only back not to have scored today. Yeah. Right, man of the match, who's your man of the well, match? Well, we've looked at it, we've charted, I think Watkins has been brilliant, Williams has been brilliant, Wellesby, but I think uh, for us today, I think um, Kazuo man of the match is, of course, Victor Rodley. I think he's been brilliant. Well, he's been, he is. He's been involved is. in pretty oh, much everything that England's done well. Certainly at the start of the game, in the first 30 yes. minutes, he really took the England team forward. We've seen him jumping a little bit, acting half to the back end of this game and being instrumental there. Story of Victor, a 24-year-old Australian born at forward, but it's, um, it's his dad, Nigel, from Sheffield. For that reason, he decided he wanted to play for England at 24. That was a big decision. This is going to be a 40-20, I think, is it? As it rolls! and rolls and rolls is there anything England can't do today well I think you know that's uh, I'm trying to get the, the score on a, the scrum set again look at them get the, the play in they've got Samoa dangling on the end of a rope I think that's, an, that's a, a skill that's been underused I think in the rugby league game here come England again now Brilliant there kick. was the kick but England immediately setting up for the attack from that it happens very quickly England with Radley, Radley spinning it left, Burgess, Burgess, Tom Burgess, how long is that list of try scorers now? Burgess over, England up to 58, this is amazing, we're running out of words to describe how good this English performance is today. Well everybody talked about the physical prowess of Samoa today and what they would have to offer. Tom Burgess has just shown that we've got some big players, we've got some strong players, we've got some aggression up front and he just barges his way over the flank, stop me again, yeah. but they can't. He picks out Milford and he just barges him over the line. There you go, Tom. I think it's first 10 minutes, Burgess is huge as well. You yeah. know, he, soft, he softened them up and then I think... Sean Wayne said in his pre-match uh, interview that, look, everyone talking about the Samoan ball carriers, and to be honest, the English pack have totally dominated the op their opposition. Agreed. Brilliant all-round performance from England, aided and abetting by a team that looked dishevelled, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, and I think, like Jamie Peacock said, there's a, 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 a new need, a team effort by England, and they were like individual efforts by Samoa. Mekinson adds the goal after the full-time hooter. Unbelievably, 60 points for England, six for Samoa. No wonder he's got a smile on his face. On this biggest stage, word perfect from England. Act one of this World Cup, performed brilliantly.
this has been a Hollywood performance. I, th I think England have really put a marker down now. You know, they were, maybe they weren't, they were given underdogs tag today. They've come out fighting and they've shown what they can do. And I think for me, it's the complete performance, but missed no mistakes when it really mattered. The game loosened up a little bit, but they were very confident and clinical. And with a bit of brilliance from the back line, you know, a, a great performance by England. Well, I think the relatively new newcomers to the team as well have added to the mix of this team. Farnworth, Young, Bradley as well. They've given the team a, an all-round look and a, and a speed and an execution look that is really pleasing. And, and there's a lot of players now who have had NRL experiences. Some of them are still playing there, some have come back from playing there. And for me, now the aura of the Australian green and gold is gone. I think they've got, they, they know they've got a chance. Watch out, world. England are coming. I think we're going to hear from the uh, man of the match, Victor Radley, in just a, a short while. Well, what a performance from him on his uh, England Test debut. Big smiles all around. Let's hear from the man of the match, Victor Radley. Didn't get over the score sheet himself, but plenty more did. And here he is with Tony. Victor, many congratulations, a player of the match performance. What was it like out there? Uh, it was really enjoyable, really tough to start. I'm not, um, I'm not sure how I got player of the match. I'm a bit embarrassed, but um, really, really good game. We knew they were going to come out firing, and um, they did. In the first 20 minutes, I was so tired, so um, it was good for us to hang in there and keep fighting. We knew we would, so um, we ended up scoring points at the end, which didn't quite show how the game actually was played out. But, um, yeah, really, really, really stoked. I know Sean Wayne was saying beforehand that you were the underdogs, but there was a quiet confidence in the camp. But to put 60 points on. Yeah, um, I didn't feel like an underdog myself, but I don't read any uh, media stuff like that. So I guess if you're into that, it, it says that, but I keep, keep completely away from it. So um, I didn't think we were the underdog, and um, we showed it tonight, which was good. It's a very new squad, this. Obviously, you are new to it. How much do you take from this? How much confidence does it give you? Yeah, a lot. Even like um, just giving each other's hugs there. It's, you get tighter every day as, as a group, and you, like you said, it's a new group. We've lost some senior players from previous years, so it um, just makes us that bit tighter to um, enjoy the end of the game like that and give everyone a hug and a kiss at the end. So um, it was really good. I was stoked. Make your Sheffield family proud, huh? Yeah, I might go see them now. That, they'll be stoked. Uh, a lot of them come, so I'm, I'm really happy. Well done, Victor. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Sean, many congratulations. What a win for your side today. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. I thought um, we did lots of good things. I never expected that sort of scroll line. Um, you know, but we can get better. We, we'll improve on a few things. Um, you know, be better for next week. But I'm very happy with the win. No doubt about that. I love the fact you just put 60 points on tomorrow and you're still talking about the things we can do better. Yeah, what well, scroll? I don't know. I don't know what scroll was, but. Yeah, there's, there is certain things, I'm not being smart, uh, there's certain things, a bit of detail, we'll, we'll further the competition if we get there, uh, we, we need to be better at, and um, you know, some more was a bit off today, but I think our defence um, put them a bit off as well, so lots of good detail, lots of good things, but um, there's always something to improve on. Dom Young absolutely justified his selection for you today. I thought all our back five were very, very good. I thought Carl, Carl Watkins was, was good, Dom, all of them carried the ball really strong. Um, do just that spell in the first half where we went a bit off, stopped doing it in the back end of the first half. But apart from that, I thought the back five was brilliant. And Jack Wellsby, I mean, he's he's such a young man, but he is such a talent that you've got there. Yeah, great, great talent. I thought George was very good. Um, I'm really, really happy with what they did. Uh, Jack's a really, really good player. And uh, it'll get better. You know, we have a great team spirit and we under, we know that nobody won't give it a chance to win um, so the team spirit really galvanised us this week This will give you a huge amount of confidence as well won't it going forward, you know you will face tougher tests than that but to put that kind of performance together in your first game 
you're right, so you we were first first off for test no doubt about that. But we, we didn't need a confidence booster. Um we, we did okay against Fiji, we did well today. We know what we can do and uh, we can still improve on that performance. No, no doubt about it in, in my mind. But in terms of the tournament, in terms of how you progress to the tournament, that was an important win to get. Yeah, I I I, I just wanted to win the game. Winning the game was the only thing for me. Um, and we did it in a really good good manner, which was which was a bonus, you know. I never expected us to win that by that minute. Sean, thanks for your time. Please, thank, you. thank you. Cheers. Well, what a second half performance from England, winning that opening game 60 points to six. Let's have a look at some of the match stats then. Play the balls, England 138 compared to Samoa's 96. Complete sets, England 34 compared to Samoa's 20. And that's what you'd expect from a team that has dominated in this second half. And total meters gained, 1,643 for the England side and tackles, 291 for Samoa, of course, defending uh, that game. So what a performance. England have really laid down the gauntlet at St. James's Park here today, 60 points to six. I'm not sure anybody saw that coming. Victor Radley, player of the match, 24-year-old Australian born, but his dad grew up in Sheffield. What a performance. And 43,119 people packed into St. James's Park to witness an historic day. So here it is, Group A. This is how the table now looks after one game. England topped the table with two points. And look at that points difference, 54 points. As we say, France and Greece will face each other on Monday at 7.30 p.m.
So seven tries from England in that second half. Let's look at this first one then from Callum Watkins. It was an easy pass from McMeekin and the Samoan. They were short on numbers, weren't they? And it saw Watkins crossover eventually. It was a superb try to kickstart the second half for England. And there we go, Watkins breaking through the line. Samoa short on numbers and Watkins eases over with the first try of the second half. Let's have a look at that again. Superb effort from England. Samoa just fell short in defence, really. Williams picks up. He's down on the ground. But eventually, we see this try from Callum Watkins. And what a tournament this could be for the, for the player who's had a tough season, actually, for Salford Red Devils. So great to see him back on top form. And try number two, this came from Herbie Farmworth. It wasn't a great pass, actually, to Herbie Farmworth, but he did well to collect. Just let's have a look at that. Yeah, the pass, it, it, the ball fell to the floor, but Her, uh, Herbie Farmworth collected well and scored on his World Cup debut. What a moment for him. We'll just have a look at that one again. That's Chris Hill, he goes to the ground. And it's a sloppy pass, really, but Herbie Farmer does well to collect, and he'll be celebrating, I'm sure, this evening for his World Cup debut, scoring on that one. And on to try number three. So many tries for this England side, and Elliot Whitehead just manages to push himself over. It did go to the video referee, of course, to, to check that one, but Whitehead, you know, he has the strength. That's what he's known for, and he battles over the line and gets the ball down. Try number three for England in the second half. Try number four then, it came from the same player. It was a cracking try. There's a break here from Tommy Makinson. Possible forward pass at some stage, which was just about here, but the players continue to the whistle. And Elliot Whitehead, he crossed over within minutes of that third try. Yeah, what a try here from Elliot Whitehead. And Tommy Makinson, you know, this could be a real tournament for him. Great to see him back on form as well. Slight dubious forward pass, but not that England will care. Elliot Whitehead crosses over, and what a try. And try number five, it'd only be fair, he set up the last one, didn't he? So this one did have to come from Tommy Makinson. Nice kick. And Tommy Makinson crosses over in the corner to put f England further in front. It was a nice kick from George Williams, wasn't it? And that saw Makinson collect well and dive over in the corner. And try number six. This one came from George Williams. And great to see him back on top form as well. You know, he struggled this season with the Warrington Wolves. They've not had a great year over in the UK. But George Williams crosses over. Sam Tompkins in a, in a wrestle there, but Williams gets, gets over. Look at the celebrations from Williams. And then finally, on to the final try, try number seven. It came from Tom Burgess, and he just crashed over. The, the Samoan defence, I think they were a bit spent by this stage, you know. They put up with a lot in this second half, and Tom Burgess, if he comes crashing towards you, there's not a lot you can do to stop him, really. And there it is. There was the final try of the game, and England victorious here at St James's Park, 60 points to six. Like I say, I'm not sure anyone saw that coming, but what a moment for England. A historic moment, really, and really kick-starts the Rugby League World Cup 2021, now in 2022, of course.